Welcome back to another episode of the Educational AD Podcast. We'll be right back with today's guest, but first, let's hear from our podcast sponsors. We want to say thanks to Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack for sponsoring the Athletic Director's Toolbox segment. Athletic Surveys are a quick, easy, and affordable way for you to collect comprehensive data that allows you to evaluate and improve your entire athletic program. Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack also connects you with the 95% of the parents who really love your program, and it gives them a voice to help demonstrate the importance that a positive athletic experience has for them. Go to athleticsurveys.com or email them at info at athleticsurveys.com to get started. If you've never used a survey to take the pulse of your parents or your student athletes, you're really missing out. Talk to the folks at Athletic Surveys and let them help you take your athletic program from good to great. We also want to say thanks to Snap Mobile. Snap Mobile can help with expensing that last equipment order. It can provide assistance with getting gear to the team on time, scheduling all your games, and registering kids for tryouts, plus rostering that team. Snap Mobile helps athletic directors everywhere to build a thriving program for their participants by easing the administrative duties that come with running a championship caliber team. Snap Mobile is here for you. For more information, visit OnSnap.com or contact your Snap Mobile representative to get the support you need. That's OnSnap.com for more information. We also want to say thank you to Final Forms, the industry leader in registration. But Final Forms is more than forms. Final Forms is a team. It's technology. And they provide schools with compliance, communication, and risk management solutions. Final Forms can help your stakeholders with mobile accessibility as reminders for parents about policies and physicals and all the forms that go with athletics. Final Forms can also help with team communication and attendance, even certification management for coaches. And for athletic directors, Final Forms helps with eligibility, with rosters, and all the reports that come across your desk. You know, it's time for you to talk to a team that's walked in your shoes. To take the next steps and find out what Final Forms can do for you, Go to finalforms.com forward slash Jake. That's finalforms.com forward slash Jake to get started with Final Forms. We also want to say thanks to Hometown Ticketing, the trusted leader in digital ticketing. Hometown helps thousands of schools and organizations across the country seamlessly provide convenient digital ticketing options for their communities, their families, and their fans. Hometown will set you up on how to sell your tickets, how to scan the people that come to your games, how to collect your revenue, and every count gets assigned a dedicated client success manager to support you the entire way. Hometown also sells tickets for performing arts, uh, for dances, even for graduation. Go to hometownticketing.com and find out how hometown ticketing can help you. Hometown ticketing, simple and easy online ticketing. We also want to say thanks to Gipper. Go to Gipper.com and see how athletic directors and coaches are creating world-class marketing content. You can create custom branded content for your school social media channel in seconds on any device, and you don't need any design experience. It's so simple, even I can do it. We use Gipper to announce all of our podcast episodes, and my backdrop is a Gipper template. Go to Gipper.com and start creating world-class marketing content. We also want to say thanks to Huddle. At Huddle, we power sports. Over 200,000 teams use Huddle to help their athletes perform better using video and analytics. Huddle is the complete performance platform. There's online tools, there's smart cameras, there's always been analytics, but there's so much more. Huddle is also built for every level of play from club and youth all the way through high school, college, and pros. You're in pretty good company with over 6 million users, including the coaches of the teams you're trying to get to recruit your kids. If you want to find out more about how Huddle can help you and your program and how your school can become a Huddle school, go to Huddle.com and talk to their professionals. Remember, at Huddle, we power sports. We also want to say thank you to Sideline Interactive. 
Our school is one of the first ones in Florida to have a sideline interactive indoor scoring table, and it's just fantastic. We use it for home games, of course, but we also use it for pep rallies. We use it for signing ceremonies. It's tremendously versatile and not only raises money for your department, but it creates the ultimate game day experience for your student athletes. Go to sidelineinteractive.com or send them an email to sales at sidelineinteractive.com and find out exactly what their fantastic products can do for you. That's sales at sidelineinteractive.com. And we want to say thank you to Wall of Fame by Vital Signs. You know, they're on a mission to bring your school's legacy to life. They've got a variety of interactive touchscreen video consoles and an extensive library of templates to help recognize the athletic achievements of your students, both past and present. Let them help you showcase your school's diverse history and your proudest moments and go to vitalsignswalloffame.com. You can also email them at sales at vitalsignswalloffame to get started. Let them help you bring your school's legacy to life. Go to vitalsignswalloffame.com. Hey, welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Educational AD Podcast. We're going to the great state of Illinois today, and our guest is Sarah Flanagan. Sarah is a certified athletic administrator. She's the director of athletics at Wakanda High School in Wakanda, Illinois. Sarah, welcome to the podcast. Well, thank you so much for having me. Well, uh, our mutual friend, uh, you know, recommended you, and uh, we're, we're so happy that you were able to join us. For our listeners, uh, we're recording this on August 11th, so uh, you may already be starting um, fall sports. Uh, kids may be back to school, or you may be like some of those states uh, that doesn't start until September, but uh, we're going to jump right in. Sarah, uh, we always like to let our listeners have a chance to get to know our guests. So give us that three-minute bio, where you were born, uh, where you went to school, uh, kind of take us up to the college years, and then we'll take a break and then come back and hear about your career path. So uh, what's the Sarah Flanagan story? Sure. Well, I uh, grew up in Crystal Lake, Illinois, which is northwest of Chicago by about 50 miles. I was born just down the street in Woodstock. It was nearest hospital. Uh, my parents were very young when I was born. Um, and in 1975, that was, you know, kind of the way it was. I was very fortunate to have grandparents that took my parents under their wing and made sure that education was a priority. Um, I went to college with my parents. So the, for the four years that my dad was in school, he was raising a daughter and three, well, three years after I was born, my little sister came. So we had a very, very lively childhood. Um, when my dad got his first teaching job at a middle school in Crystal Lake, Illinois, I was basically what you would call a gym rat because our generation was brought up when you take a teaching job and they ask you to do something, your answer is yes. Yep. And so my dad coached tackle football at the middle school, which in Illinois, we don't have a lot of tackle football that is uh, sponsored by middle schools anymore. It's all outsourced, but uh, he coached tackle football, having never played. He coached girls volleyball, girls basketball, boys basketball, wrestling, girls. Uh, he did some track and field. He did some cross country. In the meantime, my mom was finishing college uh, while raising a family and doing all of that. So we were definitely, as children, we were like the stretching children. You know, we were in a gym or at work with one of our parents or at school ourselves. So I was brought up in a gym watching how dynamic that really can be uh, to build friendships, build relationships, attach you to the school, build a sense of pride and self-worth um, and all of those things. So it was only natural that growing up in Crystal Lake, I would play volleyball and basketball. And um, I was not a gifted athlete. <laughs> and uh, I, was, uh, I was a born dancer. And so having taken no dance classes ever at all in my life, music would turn on and I could replicate whatever I saw on American Bandstand or uh, Disco Fever, I think was a television show back then. You, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I am. I mean, you know, it's OK. I take great pride in the fact that I can I can be a little bit older and wiser these days. Um, but yeah, so I was a high school dancer as my chosen sport because you just can't can't play them all. That didn't mean that I didn't have a love for volleyball and a love for track and a love for basketball. It's just 
that was where, that was where I excelled. I could have rode the bench on those sports or I could have made a difference uh, on the dance floor. And I did that. And I eventually went back and coached my high school team uh, to a couple of state championships there while I was finishing up my student teaching. So uh, collegiately, I graduated from Northern Illinois University. Um, I kept coaching as opposed to uh, participating in the college sporting world. So I was coaching dance at the school that I graduated from uh, while I was finishing up college at Northern Illinois. So that's how I, that's how my college world all went. Got a, a teaching degree in math education and got my very first teaching job at Hananiga High School up in Rockton, Illinois. Um, and, you know, just had to do some growing and had to do some learning and uh, was immediately thrust into being a head coach of a very successful cheerleading program there. Um, and it might've been a little too much. So I had to really pare down and build my professional resume, if you will, and uh, put some focus in some other areas. Because, you know, when you grow up in a family of teachers, you think, well, maybe it's just going to be easy. And you don't, as, as my partner will tell you, you don't know what you don't know. And you only, I only saw the sides of teaching that my parents would expose me to. I didn't see the other side. So there was some definite soul searching and growing there. But I've been very fortunate to work with some great colleagues. I uh, coach a lot of different things. I was a boys volleyball coach at Mundelein High School. Um, I was the assistant boys golf coach here at Wakanda High School for 11 years before I became an administrator. And now here at Wakanda, I sit as your assistant athletic director and student activities director. <laughs> well, as you as you sharing all that, uh, two things were jumping out at me. N number one, uh, you know, uh, my wife, uh, she's a career teacher and coach, and our kids, our three kids, grew up in gyms and on sports fields, and and they they did that same thing. The other thing that stuck out for me was I I could not begin to imagine um, being married and raising a child uh, at that young age, like your father was, you know, wow, hats off to him, uh, and your mom, of course, uh, for doing that. What, a, uh, yeah, I, 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 again, I, I could not have done that, uh, at all. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't, I, I kind of took focus on my dad because that was mostly what I was living through as a young child, but my mom got her teaching degree as well and was the math department chair at her, the high school she taught at also coached gymnastics and tennis, boys and girls, and, you know, was a table worker at events and, 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 and then she became the department chair. And so, you know, <laughs> that's just, it's ingrained in our DNA in my family. You just, you just say yes to everything. And sometimes that means you have to sacrifice other things, but that's, that's where the drive comes from. I'm going to guess we're, we're probably going to be hearing a little more about your mom and dad when we get to our uh, mentors uh, section. Yeah. For our listeners, our guest today is Sarah Flanagan. She's a certified athletic administrator. She's the assistant director of athletics at Wakanda High School in Wakanda, Illinois. We're going to take a quick break, but we'll be back with some more. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We want to say thanks to Hometown Ticketing, the leading digital ticketing provider to schools and colleges. Hometown helps thousands of schools and organizations across the country seamlessly provide convenient digital ticketing for their communities, their families, and their fans. Hometown Ticketing will get you set up to sell your tickets. They'll show you how to scan the attendees. They'll also show you how to collect your revenue. And every hometown account is assigned a dedicated client success manager. And the customer support is just fantastic. Hometown can also show you how to sell digital tickets for your performing arts uh, performances, for uh, dances, for graduations. Um, it's really a full service platform. Go to hometownticketing.com and talk to their experts and see how you can get your school set up on digital ticketing. Hometown Ticketing, simple and easy online ticketing. Welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast. Our guest is Sarah Flanagan. She's a certified athletic administrator and the assistant director of athletics at uh, Wakanda High School in Illinois. Sarah, you talked a little bit about, uh, you know, those post-college years, coaching jobs and teaching jobs. Share with our listeners uh, how you transitioned to what I like to call the other side of the desk. Uh, how did you get involved in athletic administration? It's really kind of interesting because I had built some pretty strong relationships at Mundelein High School while I was there. And they were going through a transi transition where their athletic director was retiring 
And the superintendent at the time had a vision for where he wanted the school to go that was a little bit different than what had been done in the years past. Uh, naturally, when you come in with something that's a little bit different, that is exciting for some and causes a great deal of anxiety for others. Um, I was on the excited side of that, of that uh, conversation. And the superintendent came to me and said, I think you would be a great leader among our staff. We'd really like to get you involved with not only our athletic program, but our student activity program. How would you feel about filling a role that they were then creating of assistant director of student activities, involvement and community relations? And in all honesty, that was what my placard said was all, the, all these words. So in essence, it was an AD position with the student activities and with the community involvement all encompassed into one. Um, it turned out not to be everything that it was sold to me to be. So that was, that was back in 2004. I was very, very young, very, very naive of what it, all the details are when it comes to running an athletic program all by itself. But now put on, put on that all of your student activities and all of your community relationships with outside rentals, people wanting to utilize your students to be junior coaches, uh, people wanting to utilize your uh, resources and equipment. And so it was just a very overwhelming task for something that had never been done before and really nobody to mentor or guide you through that. So that was 2004. At the same time, I felt like I could do everything with a six month old child, my very first, trying to learn how to be a first time mom and a full time uh, leader among educators. And it just, it was a lot. Um, if anybody tries to tell you that you can have it all, the answer is no, you cannot. Um, I have tried, I am, I am a champion for all of those moms out there that go to work every day and lead by example for their children to see that you can do it all. But you do have to be wise enough to say, I need a minute. And I think that's a really important thing. And I learned that way back then. So flash forward to five years ago, when I uh, was offered the position here at Wakanda High School, I knew exactly what kind of leader I wanted to be because I had examples of individuals that provided me maybe some smoke and mirrors of how wonderful it would be and then didn't provide any guidance. Uh, I'm dedicated to being somebody that has those open and honest conversations and is completely transparent. I don't ever want our staff to feel like we are pushing something on them. I want, obviously, I think it's also important to understand that when we are on the other side of the desk, we have a job to do and we have people we answer to as well. So having those conversations with our staff and helping them understand, I have to answer to another person, here's what we need to do to make sure that we make all of that work, I think is very important. So uh, I have a fantastic partner here at Wakanda High School. Our, our partnership is so strong and we can support each other and support our coaching staff in a way that I really think does what all of our programs are meant to be doing, and that's making children better and providing them fantastic opportunities to be everything they want to be, or even help them explore things they didn't even know would fascinate them or excite them or drive them to get up every day. So, you know, it, it, the transition was rough. I can't, I can't lie. It was rough. And in 2004, I may have never crossed back over the desk again. Um, so thankful uh, for the family I have here at Wakanda High School and the way that they continue to help build me up and help me allow me to seek out those uh, seek out those opportunities to continue to learn and continue to be better at my craft so I can assist our coaches and activity sponsors and uh, directors to make everything great for kids. Yeah, you, you touched on, you know, the two or two of the aspects of, of that whole leadership thing is that, you know, we as athletic administrators, we answer to people uh, above us, if you will, and, you know, working with them. And at the same time, you know, trying to lead and inspire and work with the group of coaches that you have. Uh, it's quite a juggling act. Uh, you know, one of my mentors, and I stole it years ago, um, used the described it as uh, juggling flaming chainsaws. And uh, it, it is quite uh, quite that juggling act, but it sounds like you're doing a pretty good job. And it's great to have that administrative support as well. Absolutely. And I, you know, I'm 
<laughs> as my principal jokes, I'm the director of fun. I don't know that that's always the case, but I do like to I do like to put on my superhero cape and I I run the pep rallies and get the kids all fired up and uh, you know I'm the I'm the school cheerleader that is for sure you'll never shake that out of me but I I am very fortunate that they recognize that that's something that that drives me as well and that I'm allowed to get a little bit wacky within this job that is sometimes so daunting so it's definitely a great a great release to uh, to keep that juggling in perspective. Oh, no. And, and those are some of those fun things about our job. And our job is fun. Let's face it. I, I always yeah. used to say it beats working for a living. Um, there's some challenges, but uh, those pep rallies, you know, guys, there's nothing better. You know, I, I think all those teachers that stand along the wall, they're really jealous of uh, us out there running around with those kids. For our guests, our uh, for our listeners, our guest today is Sarah Flanagan. She's a certified athletic administrator. She's the assistant uh, athletic director at Wakanda High School, Wakanda, Illinois. We're going to take another quick break, but we will be back. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We want to say thanks to Final Forms, the uh, industry leader in registration, but Final Forms is more than forms. Final Forms provides your school with uh, compliance, communication, and risk management solutions. They can help your stakeholders with things like mobile accessibility, They've got reminders for parents about policies and physicals and all the forms that go with athletics. Final forms can also help your coaches with things like team communication and attendance and even help them track their certification. For athletic directors, final forms can help with everything, with eligibility, with rosters, and all the reports that come across your desk. And it does this using secure language translation. You know, it's time that you talk to a team that walked in your shoes. To take the next steps and find out what Final Forms can do for you, go to finalforms.com forward slash Jake. That's finalforms.com forward slash Jake to get started with Final Forms. Welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast. Our guest is Sarah Flanagan from Wakanda High School in Illinois. Sarah, we always like to let our guests give their mentors uh, a shout out. None of us get here on our own. There's always somebody that's uh, been patting us on the back or kicking us in the butt, whatever we needed. Um, the expression I like to use is, I still hear those voices in my head. So do you have any voices that you still hear? Oh, absolutely. I, my, my grandfather, Ken Swanson, I, uh, he was instrumental, he and my grandmother, Martha Swanson, they were instrumental in making sure that, you know, my young parents were able to raise their family and get their education and do all those things. And the, while doing that, my grandfather, also a teacher, coached everything he was asked to coach, said yes to everything, you know, so we, we're going three generations back now, of people that have been involved with uh, high school students. But when he stopped coaching, he became an Illinois High School Association referee. He officiated football for 49 years. He mm -hmm. only missed his 50th year because he ruptured his Achilles. And we'll talk about that again in a minute. But he also umpired softball and baseball. He was out at girls and boys basketball games. And a lot of my Friday or Saturday nights were spent in the gym watching my grandfather be the most hated person in the gym because he's the referee. <laughs> so I have a soft spot for all of our sports officials out there who, you know, you're working for peanuts, you're volunteering a ton of time and a lot of time, especially with football, traveling maybe a hundred miles away from your home base to get to a Friday night lights game only to be ridiculed and screamed at for trying to call the game fairly. And so, you know, for all of our, all of our people out there that have their popcorn sitting in the stands and call the game better, please, by all means, reach out to me. I will give you a website where you can sign up to be a sports official today. They are the most important people next to our kids to make sure that we can continue to offer these opportunities on the sporting field. So there's that, there's that plug for you. <laughs> um, but Ken Swanson, you know, his whole point of view was that what we do is we provide opportunities to make young people better. And when he was out on the field, he would talk to number 28 if they were misstepping towards the ball, or he would talk to the point guard and say, you know, that kid's getting around you because you're not reading his shoulders. He took those opportunities to teach children how to play the game better and smarter. 
and maybe not so much at your varsity level, but at those sub varsity levels or those, fr those freshman games where these kids just want to play. And, you know, they didn't have specialized training like that in the seventies and eighties. We didn't have all these club sports and rec leagues and all of that. And so he really took that opportunity to give back to those sports that he loved so much. Um, and he instilled that in myself and in my parents, you know, my dad became a sports official as well. Uh, my mom coached everything, as I mentioned before. So, you know, it's just that connection that what sports bring to students and how they can be better. And it goes into their adult lives. Um, you know, outside of my family, I can, I can remember Bill Murphy and Bill Murphy was my athletic director in high school. Um, Bill reminds me of Ed Hockley. And I told him that the other day and he was so embarrassed. He's like, oh no, no. And I only remember Bill being this beef of a man. And when you see Ed on TV, like Ed is a, is a beef of a man that, you know, when he talks, everybody stops and listens. And it, and Bill was that person for us in high school, yet he was so caring and so gentle and so kind and willing to have a tough conversation with you, but you always left there feeling better about yourself. And I always take Bill's demeanor with me when I have to have a tough conversation or when I get to have celebratory conversations too, because a lot of times we don't like to celebrate ourselves in athletics. We want to celebrate our kids. We will put all the focus on our kids, but it's okay sometimes to toot our own horns and make sure that we are celebrating the adults that are working just as hard. So, you know, my grandfather and Bill Murphy, just huge influences on my life. And, and let me tell you, my, my pop, he had no problem telling me when to put my ego aside too. Cause sometimes, you know, we vent a little bit in this job and sometimes I would have some venting to do and he'd tell me to just sit down and shut up and put my head down and get back to work. So, you know, I, I keep that with me too, sometimes where I just need to take a, take a cool down moment and deep breath and think, what would Papa say? <laughs> I was just, uh, I, I've, I've embraced that, uh, you know, just shut up and listen uh, to young ADs and coaches. It's certainly been said to me many times, you know, in, in my young career. So I, I can sympathize. What a great story, though, about your uh, your grandfather and as a someone who's still active as a basketball official and a and a track official. Uh, my well, so I'll him. I'll add this to the story too. He he passed away in 2013. I was very fortunate. To, I mean, not a lot of grandchildren get their grandparents for as long as they do. And I, I had him for uh, all of my childhood and much of my adult life. And when he passed, I became a licensed football official to work his 50th year of football. Wow. And I, I went through all the process. I did all the training. I did the on-field work. Um, I did a I did a scrimmage game in which the uh, gentleman that was holding the chains there was a tackle that came right in front of me and out of instinct he put his arm around my waist and picked me up and moved me out of the way while I'm trying to you know learn and mentor and shadow and officiate this scrimmage game and so I said sir I, I'm okay I got it you know <laughs> but you know I it was important to me to do that and I I continue to work with the Illinois High School Association in the capacity of officiating, not so much with football, because as we all know, in an AD's world, we don't we don't make plans on Friday nights in the fall. We right. our plans are made for us. So I, I'm not on the field officiating, but I certainly do keep up with it. And you know, and I talk the talk. If I'm going to tell you to put your popcorn down and sign up, then I'm going to, I'm going to do the same thing. And so, yeah, it's, it was, it meant a lot to me. I know it doesn't count the record books, but it certainly counts to me that I earned him his 50th year. Oh, no, absolutely. It, it, it counts. Okay. Uh, <laughs> very, very cool stuff. Thanks so much for sharing that. For our listeners, our guest today is Sarah Flanagan. She's a certified athletic administrator. She's a certified official. And she's the assistant AD at Wakanda High School in Wakanda, Illinois. We're, we're going to take another quick break, but please stay with us. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We also want to say thank you to Gipper. Go to gipper.com and see how athletic directors and coaches are creating world-class marketing content. You can create custom branded content for your school's social media channels in seconds on any device, and you don't need any design experience. It's so easy, even I can do it. We use Gipper 
to announce all of our podcast episodes and my backdrop for the podcast is a Gipper template. Go to Gipper.com and find out how you can create world-class marketing content. Tell them you heard about it on the podcast. That's Gipper.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast. Our guest today is Sarah Flanagan from Wakanda, Illinois. Sarah, um, you're an assistant AD, um, and you also got quite a bit of experience. So, you, you know, you're still, let's say, young in your career, but you're not, you know, a rookie. Uh, you've already earned that CAAA. So tell our listeners, particularly those younger ones, uh, about that journey so far. You know, how'd you hear about you know, your state association, the LTI courses, you know, take us through that uh, journey. I think the most magical thing about the world of an athletic director is that we are our own support system. The day that you sign your contract and you become an athletic administrator, there are a hundred people just like you, a phone call away that are willing to help you. And that was certainly my experience. Um, in 2004, when I got my shot, I was very fortunate to have some veteran athletic directors from Illinois that took me under their wing, showed me where I could find professional development, helped me look at all the information that I had in front of me and try and make heads or tails of the organization that was there prior to me to help me match it into how I like to organize things or how I like to see them. Um, I instantly became a member of our state association, attended uh, our summer retreat for new athletic directors that's put on by both our uh, state athletic director association and our uh, state association, Illinois high school association, um, met a ton of great people, uh, met some second year ADs that were able to bullet point for us. These are the things I didn't know I was getting into. And now a year later, this is what I know to get ready for year two. And that was very eye opening and so helpful because I think I said it earlier, my, my partner in crime, Mark Ribbons, he tells me all the time, he's like, you don't know what you don't know. And there's nothing more true about that than athletic administration, because we've all been attending sporting events for our entire lives. Why else would we want to go into athletic administration? But there's so much more to it than, you know, as a spectator and so many more things that we need to make sure that we have on our radar than you could even possibly imagine just as a spectator. So it was really, I was really grateful to have those veteran athletic directors take me under their wing. I attended a state conference right off the bat, started taking uh, learn, uh, the LTI classes right away. So when I got my CAA and completed that just recently, I had actually started that in 2004. Um, you know, a new school, two children later, here I am going back into athletic administration. I'm like, I really need to finish up this, this certification. It was important to me. And it, and it's the same thing. If I'm expecting my coaches to better their craft, then why would I not be doing the same thing to better mine and make their jobs easier and help them advance in what they're doing coaching wise and help me advance in what I'm doing to help lead them and help get us into that cohesiveness. Um, I think the most important class that I took after signing on as an athletic administrator was the legal issues class, which I, I affectionately called the what to expect while you're expecting book of athletic administrators. Um, however, it's a little too late because you don't take that class until after you've signed your contract. It's like, oh man, I have so many things that fall under my umbrella. I really need to make sure that I'm on the ball with these legal issues. Um, full circle, I was asked to teach that class this summer at the summer, reti summer retreat for our state association. So building those relationships with those veteran athletic directors, then you know, staying active in the association, even though I had taken some time away, making sure that I'm still abreast at the conversation, still keeping those relationships alive, even though many of those athletic directors have retired. It's, it's been invaluable because we're a family. And I, I can honestly tell you that there's many elements of education. This athletic administrator world is a family and you can pick up a phone and call any athletic director, even if you've never met them before, uh, you saw their number on the on, on a website somewhere and they will talk you through a situation. It is it is the best professional learning network of people 
that you could ever be a part of. And so I wouldn't change it for the world. I am very fortunate. Becky Moran is now going to the national office. Uh, she is leaving our conference here in Illinois, which I'm sad to see her leave, but she is, she's out there for the education of all of us. And uh, it's going to make sure that we continue to have great opportunities uh, and moving forward. And I'll tell you, I just took the CAA test in May and she was already asking me if I was going to come to the cohort <laughs> uh, breakout session two hours after I finished the test to get my CMAA. And yes, I showed up and yes, I'm already in progress. So it's important. We want to continue to make ourselves better and that's the best way to do it. Well, I, I really appreciate you sharing. And I'm glad that you talked about, uh, it is a tremendous accomplishment to earn that CAAA. And oh, by the way, now you have that CMAA um, in front of you. Uh, have you thought at all about uh, what your project might be? I know it's you know early in the process, but... Uh... Oh, gosh. You know, it's actually, timing-wise, it's a little unfortunate because I had a COVID book written at the end of... Uh... <laughs> No, I, I, I joke because if I don't joke about that, we'll just end up crying about it, right? So um, I, I don't know what my project will be. I'm, I'm very passionate about tying together our athletic programs with our student activity programs and, and building a program where those are all elevated to the same level. If you are in the marching band, you're given just as many opportunities and accolades that our, that our quarterback is given. And, and we do a great job of that here at Wakanda. Um, we have a marching band of nearly 300 students in a Holy school of smokes. 1400. And, and so we're very proud of that. We're very proud of the fact that if you're involved in the debate team, you know that we're proud of you, just like we are our conference champion basketball team. So it's, we really, we really do a good job of tying them together. And I, I feel like that's something that all schools can do. And also having, having students understand that you don't have to be tied into one, you can do both. And I, and I think that's important to help them see you can, you can really experience all of this in high school because, um, you know, adulthood's coming and, and that those minutes are going to be gone. So let's, let's help you experience everything that you possibly could here in high school. Well, you, you just went through the, the most important principles of a CMA project. It's something that's important for kids and something that's important for you as an athletic administrator. So I, I, now you just got to tell that story. Great stuff. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Once again, for our listeners, our guest today is Sarah Flanagan. She's a certified athletic administrator. She's the assistant director of athletics at Wakanda High School in Wakanda, Illinois. We're going to take another break. I know that's not a surprise, but please stay with us. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We also want to say thank you to Huddle for their support. Remember at Huddle, we power sports. Over 200,000 teams use Huddle to help their athletes perform better using video and analytics. Huddle is the complete performance platform. They've got online tools, they have smart cameras, they've always had analytics, but there's so much more. Huddle is also built for every level of play, from club and youth teams all the way through high school, college, and even the pros use Huddle to help their teams play better. You're in pretty good company with over 6 million users, including the coaches, the college teams you're trying to get to recruit to your kids. If you want to find out more about how Huddle can help you in your program and how your school can become a Huddle school, go to Huddle.com and talk to their professionals. Remember, at Huddle, we power sports. Hey, Jake, Wakanda High School is a huddle school. We absolutely love working with huddle. It's brought new life and new reach to our sporting events. Grandma and grandpa who are living in Colorado can see games that are happening right here in Wakanda, Illinois. Uh, we can preset all of our recordings. But I think more than that, what the coaches get out of it as far as film breakdown and uh, highlight reels for student athletes and uh, sending out training videos for kids. It's just been an invaluable tool for us here at Wakanda High School. We really love it. So I'm happy to see that that's a sponsor of this podcast. Well, I appreciate you sharing that. You know, again, I came to huddle as a football coach a long time ago uh, in kind of a second chapter as a football coach. And initially I was, yeah, what's this huddle stuff? But you're right. It was just so great from a coaching standpoint and our school, uh, the school I was at before I retired, we were a huddle school and our coaches just loved it. Great, great stuff. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, um, this is the point in the podcast where um, 
we kind of put you on the spot. Uh, we like to share best practices. So what are some things that you all do at Wakanda that you're particularly proud of and you'd like to share with our listeners? Absolutely. I, I think first and foremost is that we pride ourselves on making sure it is a well-known fact that we are an education-based program. And what I mean by that is, yes, we want our teams to win. Of course, winning is fun. But there's so much more to a student athlete than just winning the game. And I'm not talking about grades. Yes, grades are important too. But the whole education-based experience is about teaching our students how to put the team ahead of themselves. Team stats are more important than individual stats. Uh, acting like you've been there before. Are we able to win gracefully or take a loss humbly? Are, those, are, those are things that are going to impact our students when they leave our buildings and in their adult world as they take on their first job or they take on their first you know, adult position out there. Um, are they able to carry on a conversation with another human being that they see in an authority position? And are they able to do that in a way that advocates for themselves positively with actual, actual facts rather than feelings and opinions? And so I really feel like that's something that we, we have been building um, and it's a part of our mission statement that we are proud of our education-based opportunities, both athletically and extracurricularly, and really driving home those pillars of what it means to be a whole person you're not just a QB. You're not just a shortstop. You are a whole human being. And all of these components go into what makes you great. And I think that's that's probably our first and foremost. Um, within that, we also drive home that we are looking for coaches that want to build positive relationships with student athletes. When those positive relationships are built, everything else will fall into place. And sometimes Sometimes those relationships take a little bit more. The toughest, the toughest nut to crack is probably going to be the one that's going to give you the most if you can get to the core of what makes them tick. And so building those relationships is really instrumental to the program that we are building here. You know, that that is an important distinction that when I speak to parent groups uh, or, or coaches is I talk about we need to let parents know that educational athletics, um, and for some of them, it's their first experience with it, you know, coming in as freshman parents, uh, they, they don't understand what we're all about. Uh, and I always say it's not right, wrong, good or bad. It's just, it's different. This is who we are. So really appreciate you, uh, you know, bringing that point up. Well, and I think it's also, it's, it's a difficult endeavor, right? Because where we have evolved to in athletics, there are tons of places you can go and write a check and get an athletic opportunity. Those exist everywhere. And if that's for you, fantastic. Please continue to go do that. But when we come into the school and the education-based programming, we still only have five starting spots on the basketball court. The best five students that are gonna fit that team concept are gonna be the ones that start. And so it is. it does cause that little bit of a difficulty because they have been playing. If they don't like this youth baseball program, they can probably drive down the street 10 miles and write a check and find one that they like better. And so it, it does cause some dif discomfort, I feel, and it causes a hurdle that, you know, we have to navigate those conversations with, with the understanding that we're all in this for the same reason. And that's what's best for these students and making sure we care for them and provide them a positive opportunity that's going to fit within you know, their capabilities. No, again, you're absolutely right. It's, you know, we're, we're, our coaches are coaching the kids, you know, and as athletic directors, you know, we coach the coaches, but nowadays we have to coach the parents too. So, mm -hmm. you know, it just makes it that much more fun. Um, our guest is Sarah Flanagan. She's a certified athletic administrator and she's the assistant AD at Wakanda High School in Illinois. We're going to take another break, but we are coming back. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We also want to say thank you to Snap Raise. Go to snapraise.com and see how their fundraising platform can help you raise thousands and thousands of dollars. Our coaches use Snap Raise, and it was just great. As an athletic director, uh, I knew about it, but I wasn't involved with it. 
There's no upfront cost. Uh, the data was secure. You could follow the progress. And as I mentioned, it works. Go to snapraise.com and find out how choosing a better fundraiser for you and your group can make the snap raise difference. Go to snapraise.com and start raising thousands of dollars. Here we go. Snap raise, they are wonderful. All of their all of their people are so kind and so lovely and they don't overwhelm you. Gosh, they're just they're just darling people. So they're actually coming out here next week to host our activity director and uh activity sponsor, excuse me, and um, coaches meetings next week as we get ready to start school. Some of our teams have used them. It's the best part about it is it does not take any additional time of your coaching staff and they don't have any more time to give. So it's a great fundraiser for them. And snap raise is just wonderful to work with. So kudos to them. Thanks guys. Gosh, that's two in a row. Thanks for mentioning <laughs> that. And, and again, as, as an AD, I remember our coaches that use snap raise. You're absolutely right. It was so easy and it, it worked. So, uh, you know, AD loved it. Coaches loved it. Parents loved it. So that's a good combo. Um, Sarah, our, our next talking point, we've been asking this question almost since the podcast began um, about social awareness. I know that's a big umbrella, but how can an athletic director do a better job of being socially aware for their school and their students for their community? You know, it, it is a very big topic and it's one that, you know, it it pushes some buttons and it definitely causes you to have an internal reaction depending on what you're facing. So I, I think internally I, we need to start with awareness, right? Awareness of what's being talked about in our hallways, awareness of what the kids are talking about in the cafeteria or during passing periods or, you know, and getting a pulse on what are, what is really making these kids social world tick? You know, um, they are still teenagers. Teenagers now, everybody says teenagers now are so different. No, they're not. They just have more technology, right? They still want to do the same things. They still want to be around their friends. They still want to spend time together. They still want to go hang out at the local, you know, five and dime on the corner or whatever your local hangout is in your town. They're still the same. They still have those same basic needs. I think the difference is they're coming to us and with a different mindset. You know, back in my day, you showed up with respect for your coach and your teacher because they were your coach and your teacher. And that's just what you did. There was no exception. Now they're coming in with a little bit of an edge on them and saying, what are you going to do to make me trust you? And, and that puts us as the adults in a position that we, we weren't raised facing that. And so we're not really sure how to address it on our end so it really goes back to I think we talked about it a little bit earlier we have to model the behaviors we want and and naturally they will begin to imitate what we model um I think you know there is a lot going on around our country uh depending on where you are things could be a little more heightened than other things and vice versa in another part of the country I think allowing those our students a safe space to talk about their feelings is a number one. Um, we talk a lot about school safety, but part of that umbrella is their psychological safety. And are we giving them a safe space to talk through their feelings and what's making them happy, but what's also causing them anxiety? And that psychological component, you know, if you showed your feelings in my day and age, you were weak. Well, that, we have no place for that anymore. We need you to come talk to us. We want you to come talk to us. If you don't want to talk to me, I'll find somebody that you feel more comfortable talking to. And, you know, in that regard, it really requires the athletic director to be willing to go out and listen and really listen to what those children are saying. And I'm not talking about in the lineup before they take the field or in the locker room, because that's, that's different. That's, that's, let's get hyped up. Let's get game focused. I'm talking about sitting outside waiting for their ride or, you know, practice isn't for an hour and they have to sit in your library and study. That's what I'm talking about. We need to get out and just listen to what they're saying. We don't need to interject. We just need to hear them and really get our finger on the pulse of what's driving their social circle circles here in the school. 
Yeah, you, you hit on so many cool, uh, uh, important topics there. You you finished there with listening. Um, you know, all of that, you know, comes out of those relationships that we build. Uh, your opening comments about back in the day, and I'm, you know, you're much younger than I am, but, uh, you know, back in the day, you're, you're right, you did show up and the coach, you, they automatically had that respect because of their position. Now they had to keep your respect, you know, over the course of the season, but now it's, uh, uh, you have to earn that right from the very beginning. And that's a good thing. But, uh, you know, very cool stuff. Really appreciate you sharing. Sarah, if one of our listeners wanted to reach out and uh, pick your brain a little bit more, um, how can they get in touch with you? Absolutely. I, my phone is available. Um, my office phone number is posted on the IHSA website. So you would go to IHSA.org and you can just look on your school center and all of my contact information is right there. Office phone, email address, all of that information. And uh, just click on the school directory and click the W. You'll find Wakanda. And uh, for our NIAAA members, I'm going to guess all that information is on the NIAAA portal. Absolutely. As well. Absolutely is. Yes. I'm on that membership portal as well as the um, Illinois Athletic Directors Association. Yeah. So, absolutely. So, again, our guest has been uh, Sarah Flanagan. She's a certified athletic administrator. She's at Wakanda High School in Wakanda, Illinois. We're going to take another quick break, but we will be back. This is the Educational Lady Podcast. We also want to say thanks to Wall of Fame by Vital Signs. You know, they're on a mission to bring your school's legacy to life. They've got a variety of interactive touchscreen video consoles and an entire library of templates to help recognize the athletic achievements of your students, both past and present. Let them help you showcase your school's diverse history and your proudest moments and go to vitalsignswalloffame.com. You can also email them at sales at vitalsignswalloffame.com to get started. Let them help you bring your school's legacy to life. Go to vitalsignswalloffame.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast. Our guest uh, is Sarah Flanagan from uh, Wakanda High School in Illinois. Sarah, you and I were talking a little bit during the break, and uh, you mentioned that you have kind of a philosophy that you uh, share with your coaches. Uh, would you mind sharing that with our listeners? Oh, absolutely. I, I'd be remiss if I didn't give a shout out to Andrew Burton. He is our director of our uh, fitness department, physical education department. He, he's a no nonsense guy who's all about, um, you know, driving kids to be better, find your best self and, uh, and make it happen. And he and I get into a lot of conversations about best practices for young athletes and the human body in general. And the, the best philosophy out there that I, I want all coaches to give to all children that show interest in your sports is water all the seeds, water them all. Because the seed is under the dirt and you don't know what that seed is going to turn into. So if we only water what we think might be the star. We only give attention to what we think freshman year might be the, the person you're going to hinge your whole program around. What happens when the people around them get bigger, faster, stronger, and we didn't water them and they quit. So, and this, this is Andrew and Andrew, I, I give a lot of props because he's, he's definitely one of my go-to people when I'm just getting in that discombobulated, you know, everything. And he is your, he is your grounding force. And he, um, it's his philosophy with them in the PE department. And I think it's one that we should definitely make sure, you know, go back to it. Did I water all the seeds today? Did I say hello to every child? Did I make sure that when they left practice today, they felt like they were loved, cared for, and I gave them my best. And I think it's important too, to distinguish everything we do comes from love, right? But sometimes love is difficult. And what I'm telling you to do, this is what's best for you. You may not like it but that's okay. And, and so it all, it all goes together in this beautiful harmony. And if we water all the seeds, we're going to get results. And so it's really, it's a great philosophy and very simplistic, but so important. Yeah. I, again, those, those metaphors are very visual and, and they're great. Uh, you know, I, I would tell our coaches, you know, make sure you coach everybody, you know, not just the superstars, but I love that visual that you provide, you know, watering, all the seeds. Very cool stuff. Okay. Sarah, this has been uh, really fun getting to know you and listening to how you do things at Wakanda, but we're not done yet. 
Uh, we always wrap up with the athletic director's toolbox. And we're gonna take a quick break. We're gonna hear from Athletic Surveys who sponsor the toolbox segment. And when we come back, we're gonna find out what Sarah Flanagan is gonna put in her athletic director toolbox. Please stay with us. Of course, we wanna say thanks to Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack for sponsoring the athletic director's toolbox segment. Athletic Surveys, are a quick, easy, and affordable way for you to collect comprehensive data that allows you to evaluate and improve your entire athletic program. We use surveys for just about everything at my schools, coaches, teachers, parents, you name it. And the information that came back was almost always overwhelmingly positive, and it will be the same for you. But it also, by doing the survey, it allowed that squeaky wheel parent to vent and also let me know about maybe some minor things that I could address uh, and kept them from turning into major things because I didn't know about it because I hadn't done the survey. Go to athleticsurveys.com or send them an email at info at athleticsurveys.com to get started. Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack. Let them help you take your athletic program from good to great. Well, it's that time of the podcast. We've been visiting with Sarah Flanagan. She's a certified athletic administrator, certainly knows her way around the world of athletics. But right now, I'm going to challenge her to send out a brand new athletic director on their very first job. But I'm only going to let her put three things in their toolbox. Sarah Flanagan, what three things are going to, going to, are going to go <laughs> into your athletic director toolbox? Uh, you know, staying organized in this job is of extreme importance. So make sure that your calendar on your cell phone or device you carry in your pocket is linked to your school calendar. That's a number one. Uh, it's very easy to overbook yourself in this job. So making sure you have that calendar organized and on you at all times is very important. Um, make sure you have a list of go-to contacts. Uh, we are always here to help you we are a phone call away. Chances are one of us somewhere has experienced exactly the same thing that you are going through or has already created a document that can help you navigate something you've already been through. So don't you don't need to recreate the wheel. We're all here. We've already we've already got those in place for you. And uh, my last one is make yourself a don't quit playlist because there will be days when you just don't want to walk in the door. But if you turn on that playlist in your car and you sing loud and proud, fill in the blank of your song, you're going to feel much better and you're going to be able to continue with your day. So don't quit playlist, make one. <laughs> All right. I, I've got to ask, uh, we've been doing uh, 300 and you know close to 30 interviews and that's another unique tool. Uh, what's, I won't ask you what's number one on your playlist, but what's one song on that don't quit <laughs> playlist of yours? It's, it's incredibly eclectic. I mean, we span from Barry Manilow to ACDC to Justin Bieber to BTS. So my don't quit playlist is quite eclectic. Uh, got a little bit of Allison in Chains in there. So like, it's very... But if I if I had to choose my walk up song to enter a room, it would be the Top Gun theme song. <laughs> so <laughs> Top Gun anthem. Excuse Sarah me. Flanagan, I want to <laughs> I, I want to have a drink with you at the NADC <laughs> and have that playlist going in the background. That that's a great idea. Great. And again, don't quit playlist. I love the theme uh, and I love the actual execution of it. Very cool. One more time, if one of our listeners wants to reach out. Pick your brain a little bit. How can they get in touch with you? Absolutely. My information is open to you in the members portal on the NIAAA website. Uh, you can also find my information under Wakanda High School on the IHSA.org website as well. Sarah Flanagan, Certified Athletic Administrator, Assistant AD at Wakanda High School. Thanks so much for spending time with us on the podcast and all the best as uh, the 2022-23 school year gets going. Thank you so much. It was a lot of fun. Oh, well, we enjoyed having you on. For our listeners, remember the Zoom recordings of all of these interviews get uploaded to the Educational AD Podcast YouTube channel. We appreciate you listening today. Come back just about every day for new content on the Educational AD Podcast. 
Before we go, we want to say thanks to Sideline Interactive for their support. Our school is one of the first in Florida to have a Sideline Interactive indoor score table, and it's just fantastic. We use it for home games, of course, but we also use it for pep rallies, for signing ceremonies. It's tremendously versatile, and the customer service is just fantastic. Go to sidelineinteractive.com or send them an email to sales at sidelineinteractive.com and see exactly what their fantastic products can do for you. That's sales at sidelineinteractive.com. Thanks again for listening to today's episode of the Educational AD Podcast. Come back just about every day for new content on the Educational AD Podcast. We'll see you next time.